your presence. We pray, O oh God, for your spirit. God, search my heart. Bring forth your word that you planted. And allow your people to hear from you. God, we sit and wait with tiptoe anticipation to be blessed by your presence. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. My Lord, my Redeemer, my rock. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Uh, should you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue this Advent season dealing with the third tenet of Advent. The first candle you see is a candle of hope and promise that God promised us and our hope is in him. The second purple candle you see lit in Advent is for the peace of God. And last week we we talked about the peace of God. That no matter what we have to go through, there's a place where we can have peace. And the pink candle that's lit for this week is a candle for joy. Joy to the world. A joy that is found in our relationship with God. John records in the 15th chapter these words, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. For a brief moment, my brothers and sisters, I want to preach from the subject matter, you can't steal my joy. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, this text, uh, that the gospel writer is reminding us that when we obey the word of God, that uh, the Lord grants us his joy. It is the word of God that we find we can go into a place of tranquility that when even when trouble comes our way, we can find his joy. Amen. And I believe, my brothers and sisters, that if the writer of the John text was here today, he he would remind us that if we live a life pleasing to God, that God gives us joy that cannot be shattered by the world. Uh, no matter what you have to go through, there's a joy that God has that the world cannot destroy. One of the problems uh, that we face in our Christian journey is that our sinful nature forces us to abide in Satan and not in God, and it produces not joy but sorrow. You see, the, the enemy wants us to live uh, in a state of regret, and so he entices us to, uh, with things that make us happy. Amen. How many of you know that what will make you happy will also make you cry? Uh, happiness is the number one robber of joy. Happiness steals uh, our joy. To be happy is to be controlled by 
our surroundings and our circumstances. Have you ever considered the fact that happiness is a result of what you're going through? If I'm going through rough times, I, I don't get happy. But when things start going my way, it seems that I'm happy at the highest of happiness. Uh, the enemy understands if he can control our environment, he also controls our happiness. And if my happiness depends on the actions of the world, then it robs me of the joy that is needed to have hope that all things will work out for its good. The enemy kills our joy by convincing uh, our minds to focus on our pain and our problems. The word, the word of God declares that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil has stolen too much from us, my brothers and sisters. I say the devil has stolen too much from us. My brothers and sisters, and, and, and God is saying that once we abide in him, that he'll take us to a place where the devil cannot touch us. The devil has stolen our peace. He has convinced us to believe that life is full of disappointments and setbacks. He has taken our hope and turned it into despair. And because he doesn't play fair, he has stolen the joy that God gives us freely and He remi by reminding us of our sinful nature. Amen. And when we focus on our sins, we find solace and comfort in the wrong places. Amen. Have you ever considered why we make the dis uh, dis choices that we make? Why are we always tricked by that one that says, I'm going to be right the next time? Have you ever considered why we get tricked and bamboozled by folk around us who seemingly make us happy for what they have, just to find that they tricked us? Day after day, we fight this fight on our, uh, with our minds, and we end up in a place where uh, all we want to be is just happy. I've been going through these financial problems for quite a long time, and if I can just hit the lottery, I'll be happy. I've been in and out of bad relationships since I uh, was old enough to date, and if I can just find a good man or find a good woman, I'll be happy. Uh, because I have to go through many trials and tribulations, the, the devil tries to convince me that uh, being happy is the ultimate place in life. Have you ever been there? And do you find yourself trying to find a, a happy place, a place where you can forget about what you got to go through and where everything will be okay? I have discovered in my life that being happy is not all what it's cracked up to be. Happiness sometimes clouds my judgment. The pursuit of happiness sometimes causes me uh, to turn my back on my faith. And because my happiness ignited by my experience, uh, things that make me happy uh, uh, also make me sad. My happiness is a product of, of my emotions and is based on things that I endure. I become happy as long as I'm receiving something and come, become mad when nothing comes my way. And when I'm filled with sorrow, I don't feel like praising God for who he is and what he can do. I need something more than just happiness. I, I need something to sustain me when I go through some good days and some bad days. I, I need something that will give uh, uh, me the hope that knows that God will make a way out of no way. I, I need something to remind me that trouble don't last always. I, I need something more than just mere happiness. I need to get into that place where no matter what life brings my way, I know that God will make a way. Although it's a human nature desire to be happy, I need more. I need some joy. And what I found in this text today that my joy does not depend on what I do. But my joy is based on who God is. 
And our love and hope in Jesus Christ produces a joy that is unshakable. And as we lifted up the past two Sundays, God has made us promises that if we seek after him, if we seek his face, we shall receive a hope that allows us to have peace in the midst of our storms. This hope is not based on what we can do, but rather what God has already done. Jesus has already died that we might live. He rose from the dead that we may have a future hope in him. Therefore, if we seek after him, we shall find him. And, and I don't care what it looks like. I, I don't care what it even feels like. When I seek after God's face, I have the hope that reminds me that my best is yet to come. Hope is, uh, is that substance that lets me know that God can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that I can ever think of or ask. God is, uh, uh, will not put more on me than I can bear. And it is in my hope that I have the confidence that no matter what I got to go through, no matter what life brings my way, I can stand in the midst with flat footed and say, devil, you cannot steal my joy. Joy is opposite of happiness. It is, it is important for the believers to understand uh, the difference between happiness and having joy. Joy is the evidence of God in our lives. It is the result of an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Happiness takes us to experience some things, but joy takes us through the things we have to endure. Uh, joy is the complete opposite of happiness. Happiness is birthed out of our emotions and is dependent on what we're currently going through. But joy comes from the Lord. I said joy comes from the Lord and the joy of the Lord is our strength. When I get weak from the grip of pain and frustration, I can find strength in knowing that my joy is not determined by my problems. God promises to restore the joy of his salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me while I'm going through what I'm going through. Uh, joy comes from God and it runs deeper than happiness. In fact, joy can be present even in the absence of happiness. Because the joy of the Lord is not predicated on how I feel, but rather how God feels about me. God said that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive them of uh, their sins and heal the land. Because uh, 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 my joy does not come from what I do, but what God said he would do. Uh, devil, you can't steal my joy. Uh, but the question, my brothers and sisters, uh, that we must have to contend with is how does the devil steal our joy? It's good one thing to tell the devil you can't steal my joy, but it's another when we don't know the schemes of the devil and allow the devil to steal our joy. Uh, the first thing uh, we must understand, my brothers and sisters, is that the devil steals our joy first by the works of our flesh. Uh, works of the flesh are attempts to accomplish kingdom principles in a sinful mindset. When we are controlled by our flesh, we do not focus on God's kingdom. Uh, and as a result, we focus and rely on what we can do for ourselves rather than what God has already done for us. The Bible declares that, that the spirit of the Lord gives life and, and the flesh profits nothing. You see, we must understand that when we get the mindset that I can do all things by myself, that uh, joy don't come our way. You see, God created us to be dependent beings. We're either going to be dependent on the word of God or dependent on our own flesh. And when we are dependent on our flesh, we allow Satan to steal our joy. But I thank God that my flesh does not control who I am. 
For when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, uh, my soul, which is led by the word of God, uh, begins to rejoice because my soul knows that the joy I have, the world didn't give it, nor the world can take it away. Uh, the second uh, uh, reason why we allow Satan to steal our joy is by religious legalism. Yeah, let me break that down. Uh, religious legalism suggests that we worship the church and its practices rather than worshiping God. Uh, we become legal in our worship. That folk don't want to come into your church because there ain't no joy in there. Amen. I got to do this and I got to do that. And, 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 and I must clean up this and I must. Clean. We have become so legalistic in our church that Satan don't even want to come in here. <laughs> we should enjoy the grace of God. We should come in and not be concerned about how the program's supposed to go. We so caught up on the program and the order of service that we don't allow the Holy Ghost to come in and change lives. We become so legal in our worship. Uh, if, 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 if you haven't uh, uh, accepted Christ the way I say you should accept Christ, then we don't allow folk to come up in our church the devil and his daddy is a lie because God says that come to me whosoever and when you come in the name of Jesus whosoever you shall be saved it's time out for the church to stop being a church full of sorrow folks and to have some joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength God's been too good I say God's been too good to to not to share his joy. He woke you up this morning, didn't he? He started you on your way, didn't he? God is too good. He said, come into the house with thanksgiving in your hearts. Not concerned about what you're wearing, but concerned about who you're serving. We get so caught up that, that, that we got to wear certain garments on first Sunday. And we got to wear certain garments on this Sunday. And we come in here and we don't have no joy because we're so tight that we, we hold back on our praise. We allow Satan to steal our joy too long. God is looking for a church that don't care what you got on. You come as you are and leave as God has called you to leave. With a changed heart and a changed mind. And finally, my brothers and sisters, the devil steals our joy when we allow jealousy and envy come into the church. <clears throat> God wants his children to learn to love what he has given you. And don't be worried about what he's given someone else. You know, you, you, don't be like sister so-and-so. God already got one of them. Be like yourself. I don't care if you, you broke, busted, and disgusted. Be a broke, busted, and disgusted praise and worshiper. I don't care if you've been down in the valleys of the shadow. I don't care if you've been incarcerated all your life. When you come into the house of God, be the best you you can be. Because God is the one who lifted you up, turned you around. I understand that we are to rejoice when my brothers and sisters are being blessed by God because we know that we serve a God that is no respect of person, people, or places. Uh, but it's time out now to be, stop being jealous because you can't do what someone else can do. We allow Satan to steal our joy because we're so caught up in what someone else is doing. And not what God is doing through us. I'm so glad my brothers and sisters. I learned a long time ago. That the joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. I wonder this morning. Is there anybody here. Who doesn't mind looking at the enemy. And declaring enemy. You can't steal my joy. For my joy did not come from this world. My joy did not come from my good looks. My joy did not come from my problems. 
nor my pain. But my joy comes from the Lord. My joy is deeply rooted in the pavilions of his majesty. My joy does not sleep nor slumber. My joy is able to keep me in times of trouble. My joy was bruised uh, for my iniquities and chastised for my peace. I stopped by to tell somebody, don't mind the devil. Tell the devil, devil, you can't steal my joy. My joy was born in poverty uh, by a mother who was touched by the Spirit of God. And the Bible declares that she wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger. But there was no guest uh, room available in the end. And there were shepherds living out of the fields nearby, watching over the flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord, can I preach the scripture like I can preach it? And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of God shone around them and they were terrified but the angel of the Lord said to them do not be afraid I I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people this day in the town of David a savior is born to you he's the Messiah the Lord Almighty And finally, suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angels praising God and saying glory to God in the highest on earth. Peace to those whom his favor. I just stopped by on my way to glory to tell somebody don't be afraid. God, I bring you good news. And the good news is that your joy is in the Lord. Uh, there's a name that's above every name. Your joy is in the Lord. That at the name of Jesus, every knee got to bow and every tongue got to confess. At the name of Jesus, demons tremble. Men worship and angels adore. At the name of Jesus, when you got to go down and go through some hell, you can look at hell and say, hell, you can't steal my joy because I know too much about them. My God shall supply. Good God Almighty, I feel like preaching in here right now. Can I preach for a couple of moments? Because I can hear the Bible says that if you keep my commandments, that means I got to know the word of God and I got to follow and do what God said to do. He says that I will abide in you. In other words, when I follow my Lord, God will be inside of me and his love will wrap me up inside of me and I don't have to worry about what I'm going through. I don't have to worry of what people say about me. I don't have to worry how much money I got in my bank account because if I got God inside of me, I can look at my problems and say, problems, you can't steal my joy. Is there anybody here that knows the joy of the Lord is your strength. Is there anybody here? Don't play with me. Come on, I need to know. Is there anybody here that knows that the joy of the Lord is your salvation? If God's been good to you, why don't you high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, what I'm going through can't steal my joy. Why don't you look at the other neighbor and say, neighbor, he brought me through many trials and tribulations. And the same God that blessed me last year is the same God that's going to bless me right now. Come on, problems. Hit me with your best shot because you can't steal my joy. Is there anybody here that knows that the joy of the Lord is your strength? If you know that it's your strength, why don't you say yes? Say yes. Uh, He's been good. He's been mighty good. He's been so good that when I wasn't fit to live and not ready to die, joy came and hung on Calvary's cross. And joy says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Uh, And when he hung, bled, and died, 
uh, he went down into the grave and he gave the revival down to those that who were caught up. And the Bible says that he rendered Satan no power because on the third day, joy rose up. And now that's why we sing joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. Because when I got to go through what I got to go through, I can look back on my life and say joy brought me over. I know I lost my mother at a very young age. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, even when I lost my mother, I still got joy. Even when I lost my house, I still got joy. Even when I lost family members, I still got joy. Why? Because God lives inside of me. Devil, you can't steal my joy. You, 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 you can't. You can, you can do whatever you want to do. But you can't steal my joy. You didn't give it to me. You can't, you can't take it away. You, 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 you might want to try to trick me to be happy. But I need something more. I need the joy of the Lord. God, we thank you and we love you. We pray, oh God, that during this Christmas season, whatever we have to endure, we still have joy. God, I know there's going to be some up times and some down times. But I pray, oh God, by the power of your spirit, that you don't take my joy away. For I know, O oh Lord, that my hope lies with my joy. Forgive us when we fell prey to the world seeking to be happy. Bless us now, O oh God, with joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The doors of the church are open. If you've never given your life to Christ, let this be the day that you change from being happy to living in the joy of the Lord.